why do I need to learn about conveyor belts? Isn't a belt just a belt? No, not really. If you choose the wrong belt, a lot can go wrong. Like what? Well, you can lose Prada. Someone can get hurt. Or you could have unnecessary downtime. But seriously, not understanding conveyor belts can really hurt your bottom line. Okay, you make a good point. A conveyor system is made up of lots of parts, but the most important part is the belt. And there's a lot of variables to consider. Like what? Picking the right belt is kind of like picking the right clothing. You need to ask yourself, what am I doing? Where am I going? What is the weather going to be like? Okay, I see what you're saying. So what are my options? I thought you'd never ask. A belt is made up of three major components. The carcass, the skim, and the cover. And you want to start by picking the right carcass. When you say carcass, you mean... The carcass is the skeleton of the belt, giving it structural integrity. Its purpose is to transmit the tension necessary to lift and move the loaded belt and to absorb the impact energy unleashed by the material as it's loaded onto the belt. Oh, okay. So, when picking your carcass, you need to consider the PIW, which means the pounds per inch of width. So the PIW basically tells you the overall belt strength. Exactly. There's three main options for the carcass. So, let's imagine you're standing looking at three doors. Behind each door are three different kinds of carcass. Behind door number one is the plied carcass. So what's the PIW for that? Well, there's two ply, three ply, and four ply. If the PIW is 110, for the two ply its strength is 220. Three ply strength is 330, and the four ply strength is 440. If the PIW is 125, the two ply strength is 250, three ply is 375, and four ply is 500. And if the PIW is 200, the two ply would be 400, the 3 ply is 600, and the 4 ply is 800, right? Exactly. Very good. So now let's look at what's behind door number 2. It's the straight warp carcass. So tell me about the PIW of that one. Okay, so for this one there's only single ply and double ply. If the PIW is 440, the single ply strength is? 440. Right. And for the double ply, if the PIW is 330? The strength is 660. Exactly. And if the PIW is 440 with the double ply... The strength would be 880, and that's pretty strong. Yes, it is. And we still haven't looked at what's behind door number three. It's the steel cable carcass. I think I'm all numbered out for right now. That's okay, because I need to mention there are safety factors to consider, but that's a discussion for another time. Okay, well, that's all good information. What's next? Well, no one wants to look at a skeleton. Our skeleton needs to be covered and protected, and so does the carcass. Does that make the belt even stronger? Not really. It's all about protecting the carcass. The top cover is usually thicker than the bottom, but not in all cases. Either way, you would want to look at the DIN rating and the tensile strength. Okay, well, what is that? The DIN rating is the abrasion loss factor of the belt. The lower the number for this, the better, because it means your cover will protect the carcass to the practical limit of its working life. Okay, so I want a low DIN rating. What about the tensile strength? It seems like that should be a high number. And you'd be right. The tensile strength is the cut and gouge factor in the cover, so the higher the rating, the better. Okay, so what are my options with the covers? Back to door number one? Yes. So there's grade one and grade two. And within those are a variety of specialty covers. Grade one covers are designed for high impact, sharp and abrasive materials, and adverse loading conditions. That sounds like a good option. It is, but again, you have to ask yourself, what will you need it for? Grade two is primarily used for a sized product and is designed to prevent abrasive wear. I could see how that would be very useful too. And let's not forget about the specialty covers. There's fire resistant, heat resistant, fire retardant, chemical resistant, oil resistant, cleated or textured. Wow, that's a lot of options. And it's good to have options so you can get something specific to your needs. So here's a breakdown of how to choose your belt. One, analyze and choose the PIW you need. Two, pick your carcass and material size. Three, Find out what's the drop. Four, know what's the feed angle. Five, what kind of pulley diameter do you need? And then six, of course, use common sense. Here's an example of our available Belt Tech specs. So call us or visit our website, belttech1.com to help with selections.